Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, nice, nice to meet you. you. You're from Chowchilla, right? Yes. Yeah. Modesto. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> so when I heard that, I went, I have to mention that to him. Okay, first, thank you so much for talking to us at That's Normal. Um, so first, I wanted to talk to you guys about the notion of the adaptation. Ron, you obviously have said that this book, this next season, will be more of an adaptation of Dragonfly and Amber. So. What are your thoughts about taking such a complex novel like Dragonfly and Amber and honing it down into a one-hour series? What are your thoughts on that? It's tricky, you know, it's not easy. Um, the, the first season was uh, more of a straight-ahead adaptation. Uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a straight narrative. It was you kind of, you were following Claire's journey a little more cleanly in terms of just simplicity of story. But the second novel is just more complex. It's deeper, it's richer, it, it has different patterns and structures of characters coming and going. It, it shifts place, you know, suddenly you're in Paris and uh, there's a different time travel elements in it. Uh, it was just a meatier thing to kind of dig into. It took more time and more like work to kind of figure out how to take this story and put it over in this media. You know? Whereas first season was a little, you kind of got it a little faster, like, oh, this will be that and that and that and that. And Diana, as as the creator of this world, of this wonderful world that we're all obsessed with now, um, when you hear the words adaptation, what goes through your mind as the person who, who wrote this book? This, yes. <laughs> Well, we couldn't possibly have been luckier in, uh, in our, uh, it wasn't really a choice, but right. in our, cho in our uh, fortunate uh, conjunction of, ad of adapters. Now, Ron is a genius at this. He can take something that, you know, in the text form is like this right. and, you know, make it like that, which is, is very good. No, he is very good at grasping the, the essence, the important points of the story, so that someone who has loved the books is going to recognize that story on screen, even if, you know, well, you have the hardcore book people are sitting there with the book in their hand going, he left that out, he left that out. Oh, my God, he left that right. out. Right. <laughs> Which, you know, that's always going to happen. But I tell people, I said, put the book down, you know, enjoy the show for what it is. Then you can go back and read the book again. It's fine. You're not losing anything. <laughs> Excellent. Now, both of you have mentioned last, I believe, uh, in the L.A. fan gathering, both of you mentioned that there was a scene that stood out in your mind, Ron. I know it was the scene of Jamie in the window rescuing Claire. That was the scene when you were thinking that has to be filmed. And Diane, I know you talked about the notion of Jamie's abuse, his rape, and you wanted to see that. Is yes, there did. a... <laughs> Is there a particular magnificently perfectly? <laughs> yeah. um, is there a particular scene if we can talk about this in this book that stands out in your mind that you're like that has to be filmed? Yes, there is, but I can't tell you what it is. Oh. <laughs> no, that's okay. That is okay. Going into your books, Diana, they are very rich in historical content, even from the finite details. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, can you just take us through the process? Because you, you make it seem so seamlessly and effortlessly, and obviously it's, it's complex. Can you talk to us about the process of researching for your books? Oh, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very organic in terms of both of research and writing. I don't write with an outline. I don't plan the books ahead of time. I don't write in a straight line. Mm -hmm. What I need to start on any given day is a kernel, a, a vivid image, a line of dialogue that I can start with. And often enough, that's a historical detail. If I have no idea what I'm doing today, I flip through one of my things and, you know, here's a Scottish goblet with thistles on it. I think, fine, I'll start with that. <laughs> so I'm saying, you know, the late uh, afternoon light fell through the Scottish goblet. And I'm thinking, no, that's too many adjectives back up. Anyway, that like that. And, you know, gradually, as that scene begins to grow, I'm a very slow, fiddly writer, I don't work in drafts. But as I go along, I'll think, well, I need to know more about this particular thing. So I stop for a minute and I go look it up and I'm thinking, oh, cool. But then I see this other thing, you know, that I would never have thought of looking for. I'm thinking, oh, that's cool. I have to use that. So I you know, start another scene with that and let it sit while I'm working. So it's, it's just back and forth kind of thing. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Um, and Ron, for you, um, in regards to screenwriting, um, are you going to are you going to write a particular? We know you wrote episodes last season. Are you going to you know put on both hats of producer and screenwriter for any particular episode? Yeah, I mean, I wrote the first two episodes of this season, and I usually have my hand in the, the scripts in some in some form, one way or another. You know, somewhere through the process, because I'm still kind of the head writer, as, in addition to being uh, the producer. So it's always. On some level, I have to always be responsible for what ends up on screen, and there's a point where you know I'll say, well, no, we're gonna, I'm gonna change that because I just kind of think that that's what it what it needs to be. But you try not to, you try not to damage another writer's voice, which is a very delicate line. Like the other writers have a very very important contribution to the show because they're bringing those individual scripts to to life. And so when I take a pass at it or if I'm working on it, I'm trying to keep the writer in, in the script, you know, not just like throw it away because oh, I have a different line in my head, you know. You, you try it's a fine line that you that you learn to walk. 